the National Collegiate Paintball Association Championships. I'm Maddie Marshall with Kevin Catfish Arcia, and right now the Tennessee Volunteers are going to be taking on the Michigan State Spartans. I'm hoping for a close game, Catfish. Yeah, we have yet nice. to see a close game. Um, and hey, I mean, if you're Drexel, Texas A&M, or uh, Temple, you're incredibly happy because those teams had blowout wins this morning. But we're looking forward. Hopefully, this one's going to be a little bit closer. Yeah, um, a lot of the closer games are gonna, probably going to come in. Uh, like on Saturdays, yeah, we'll Sundays, see. deeper we'll into see. the tournament. Yeah, deeper into the tournaments, but uh, these are the very first games of the day. So I mean, hopefully we get a close one. They've just been all one-sided. Well, you know the teams that are getting beat. This might seem like an obvious statement, but it's been mostly survivability. A lot of times it's you know because I like the game plans. Is you know if you're just tuning in. Clemson wasn't running bad game plans. A little on the aggressive side. Yeah. This field layout, I think, could end up playing a little bit slow when we get to the deeper rounds of the tournament. We will see. But, uh, but it's just, you know, because they have big back bunkers and a lot of teams are choosing to gunfight out of those spots, we're seeing a lot of guys drop bodies early. So looks like Tennessee first to attack in that center. They get to the center 50 wall, looking D side. Oh, now into, this, into the snake one for Tennessee. Look at Tennessee just filling those back, those bunkers in as one guy goes. I like that. Tennessee player trying to get that jump shot in the middle. Yeah, you know, you got to be pretty tall to be able to shoot through those cracks. And now joining them up there is Michigan, is looking towards the snake side and see who's the first to go here. As normally you don't have, you don't live very long when you've got a player on the opposite side of yeah, your bunker. Shadow. Look who's for Shao to make a move here. Try to take out the Tennessee player in the middle. Or not. And they're still in there. Oh, here Battle it is. developing in the center. Shao is the first to attack. And he clears him out of that wall. Trading out. And then in Tennessee loses another body, though, on that D side of the field, playing a little bit too high out of that mini wall bunker on the D side. So that's two bodies that have dropped for Tennessee. A slight advantage for the Spartans. See if they can do anything with that. Tennessee still has a body, though, in uh, Snake 1. And now doing a little bit of damage control, trying to spread that field out. Player for Tennessee getting to the back bunker on the D side, so that's a good fill for him. Yeah, a good move to help on the D side there. Looks like a sparring coming to the D, uh, Dorito 50. So oh. a little bit, little bit too uh, eager for the uh, player in Snake 1 here is he tried to come around on the inside, had a little sloppy, died at that spot, and then you know here comes that survivability for Tennessee. His, he loses his back player. That leaves just one body left alive for Tennessee in the back corner bunker. So we'll see if the Spartans can just take this last player out and they're gonna save, looks like Tennessee is gonna save their last guy some pain and concede the point. So a solid first point here for the Spartans. And Michigan State gonna put the first point on the board here, we'll see. Tennessee, or if uh, Michigan, sorry, Tennessee gonna, yeah, actually, yes, Tennessee lost that first point. No, ten, oh, did they? Oh, okay. So Michigan was, uh, came away with that point instead of Tennessee. There we go. Yeah, Michigan, though they lost that first body, it just, again, survivability, Tennessee losing too many guys out of their spots. Um, you know, yeah, there was the rundown in the center, but then they lost their guy out of the mini wall bunker on the D side, out of his bunker. They lose Snake one out of his bunker, and then they lose his back guy out of his bunker. So pretty much three quick deaths sealed the deal. And uh, and that's why Michigan was able to put that first point on the board here. And again, thank you guys so much for joining us here. If you are enjoying this free NCPA webcast, there is a donation. So uh, donation page, you go to ncpapaintball.com. If you're enjoying the webcast, you can help support it. This is not free. These things are expensive to put on. <laughs> so even though you're enjoying it for free, it's not really free. Somebody's paying for it. So we'd appreciate your help. And uh, also still time to register for the big NXL event happening down in Dallas a couple weeks from now, May 5th through the 7th. Head to nxlpaintball.com as we're going to be hitting the second stop on the 2017 tour shortly. So Mich get Michigan and Tennessee getting ready to play their second point. Michigan ready to roll. Tennessee just getting their bodies out right now. Just under 10. Tennessee needs to hurry. Oh, here we go. Oh, 
on the breakout here and a big move up the center for Michigan State. The Spartans able to get that body to the wall and off the delay, get a body right behind him in the white zone. The stand up can. Both those guys looking D side right now. Oh, Tennessee players back stand up coming off. Looks like Tennessee player diving into the snake. Hopefully, Michigan player dropping on the snake side. Looking like Tennessee's blown the snake side of Michigan State here. Well, this is what Tennessee wanted to happen. They just got a kill from the back stand up temple. So, and not a lot of guns looking snake side right now. Looks like just one gun for Michigan State looking snake side, which is why they're able to get, looks like Tennessee has a body in snake two. Yeah, we, looking got, at, we got white here in snake two. Ooh, look for white just now picks up the wall and gets an, or who eliminated white? Yeah. yeah, well, White got shot in his left arm coming out towards that side. Well, there was, there was not a lot of guns for Michigan State, but as soon as they figured out that he's there, and here comes Cook. Yeah, so Cook coming through, and he's going to also get taken out. So, you know, it wasn't looking bad for Tennessee, but they lost a couple bodies, oh, and then Cook, Cook had to try to do a desperation run, and it looks like, is that going to be a minor penalty on Michigan? See the ref running in. Yeah, the ref's yelling at one of the Michigan State players to get in the box. And uh, so that minor penalty is going to stay on the clock because if you win the point, the minor, minor penalty will stay up there. If you lose, it's going to come off. Again, these are old school X-Ball rules here in college paintball with 10 minute halves and minor and major penalties. Six minutes, 28 seconds to go. Let's check in with Lauren Kelly. Thanks, Maddie. This is Michigan State's first college X-Ball tournament ever. This morning they played Central Florida. They lost three to eight, but they said they were actually really happy with their performance, even though they lost. Uh, they knew that uh, Central Florida was a veteran team, and so they actually surprised themselves getting some points on the board. So it seems like they're here to maybe prove something, have some fun, but they're not taking themselves too seriously. Back to you. You got to start somewhere, right? Yeah. We all started somewhere. and. Man, I, I love coming to the College Paintball Tournament every year. I'm not just saying that. I really like the vibe down here. Um, the college guys are always super fun to hang out with, and they just I love the attitude they have. It's very competitive on the field, but off the field, off the field they're just you know talking smack to each other and <laughs> sipping adult beverages if they're of age and just having a good time. It's really nice down here in Orlando. Um, touch under 80 degrees. Got a little breeze going on. And, oh, yeah, Michigan State, their first step into this division. Tennessee's been here before, but Tennessee's looking a little sloppy to start things out here uh, in, this, in these first two points. Yeah, Michigan looks to be the, the more aggressor of the two. They've been sending that uh, player up to the wall consistently and then having the, his trailer bump out to the Doritos. So, I mean, they're definitely being a little bit more aggressive than Tennessee or a lot. Well, T Tennessee's chosen to go the snake route and doesn't look like it's been working for them well, at all. White's doing a good job of getting into the snake, but he <coughs> yeah. needs to tighten it up once he's in there. So that's two points in a row that we've seen White get into the snake but die out of that spot. So we'll see, can White continue to get up into that spot? They're actually just gonna oh. take the snake one off the break. Dives oh. out wide but gets clipped. Heavy guns for Michigan State, they definitely chose the right game plan, doubling up that back center temple, but I think they just lost one of their bodies out of there. Or either that or he took a fat bouncer in the head. Wow. Hey, man, I'd rather be lucky than good. And yeah. that guy just got <laughs> really lucky. <laughs> Looks like uh, Tennessee, they sent Ramsey off the break to the snake and didn't make it in. <laughs> that ball direct drove that guy. Well, he had, he had two lives. He just spent his second life, though, as he walks off the field. Michigan State able to get in the snake. and I Look for Carlin to... Uh, Shoot this wall out here if the wall comes over and look the snake way. Well, they need to get the communication. Tennessee yeah. needs to call the fact that the snake is oh, hot in there. Carlin. He definitely, I got clipped yep. from somewhere. Yeah, I don't know where did that shot come from. I have no idea. He might have got shot getting in there because he didn't really engage once he was in there. He might have got shot trying to oh, get in that spot. He's lucky he didn't get a penalty. Oh, wow, that's a big bite right here. Cook again playing the aggressor, but Tennessee loses their 50 wall. They do have the 50 here in the snake. And he's wrapping around trying to get a shot on the, the mini wall. Yeah, the mini wall in the back. He's the guy right now. This yeah. Cook's the man for Tennessee. He needs to be careful. The guns have turned to him. Everyone knows he's there. He has two guns on him. And it's soon going to be a third. It looks so, like we have uh, one of the Spartans making a move out. Well, since all the guns have turned to Cook, 
it's a good thing that his teammate made a move into the red zone up into D3, because everyone's looking to cook right now. Uh, Valajo's getting eliminated as he's trying to make a, a, pu a push, trying to get Cook here. Cook to wrap. There we go. So far, I like how Cook's playing yeah. this spot. I like how he got in here. He's engaging, but not recklessly engaging. He knows where the bodies are, and he's doing what he needs to do to try to put Tennessee's first point oh, on the ten board. Tennessee coming down the Dorito side. See? This oh, is look at a that. Great move. It's punch, counter punch. And Who was that dancing around over there? Oh. Penalty. Was that excessive dancing, maybe? <laughs> oh, man. Was that White that got a penalty? No, White's going into the into the box, but whoever was on the Dorito side got a penalty. Well, there, was there enough bodies left alive? Okay, Cook is still alive. Yeah, I don't think so, he liked his dance move. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, Cook, what happened was you were balling out of control, and then this guy over here, your friend, was just dancing. So we're going to call penalty. They just, the new rule? Did, I, they, did I, they write that in recently? I, I think they're going the NFL way. <laughs> Sir, you can only do, <laughs> have you seen that Keen, Keelan and Peel skit, two pumps? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so here on the replay, so a big move off the break, but slides out wide and gets taken out. But Cook was able to get in there shortly after that. And once the gun shifted Cook's way, this is what happened on the opposite side of the field. But that's why you get into crucial see, positions. The reason why, the move. Oh, no. Nah, it was just a little, little, uh, little excitement. They should be, that's their first point, and it's close now with four minutes and five seconds left to go. So let's uh, let's check in with Lauren. Maybe she has some information on that penalty. Hey guys, yeah, the penalty was on player number 13 for Tennessee for unsportsmanlike conduct for swearing on the field. Whoa, Back to you. that's a no-no. Oh man. That's it's an no unfortunate no. turn of events for Tennessee because they're going to have that. So you get the minor penalty, you win the point, stays on the clock. So um, they're going to have to start down a body. The Spartans will be on a power play with a one-point lead and four minutes and five seconds left to go. But the most important thing for Tennessee is we finally saw some production out of their front players. Um, they still lost a couple guys, but Andrew Cook really stepped up and won that point. I mean, yeah. not couldn't see who that was for them on the D side that was playing off of his move, but he also did a great job as well. The potty mouth? The potty mouth, yeah. I'm just glad that so, rule I mean, wasn't around when we were Shame on him for cursing. Yeah. You know, we never did that back in the oh, day. No. I never I never got penalties for, you know, yelling at refs or cursing the paintball gods. Yeah. So on the breakout here, Tennessee able to get back into snake one. So they've been consistent with aggressively pushing on this snake side of the field. Yeah, able to keep their four bodies alive this time, Catfish. Yeah, definitely. Looks like the Spartans decided not to send that player up to the wall. It, I guess it wasn't working out like they, they had hoped. Look for them to come into the snake here, meet the Tennessee player that's already in there. Looks like we got Carlin here trying to make his move in. Look for him to jump, there it is. He wants to go, and he makes and his move into snake one. So uh, snake two is hot for Tennessee, still slightly in the white zone. There on your screen. And he's listening to that communication. Oh, the Sparn's making a move all the way up into the Dorito 50. Oh, uh, and a red major flag. penalty. So this is somebody. With Michigan State, not what they wanted to happen here. Oh. This really should give the advantage to Tennessee, particularly because Tennessee just had their body come out of the yeah. penalty box. So, uh, big advantage right now for Tennessee. See if they can make the most of it. Oh, man. Looks like uh, there's only, what, two Spartan players left alive or three? Yeah. Maybe Michigan. Going to try to eat a lot of this time off this major that they just received. Yeah, they're going to want to try to meet because that major stays on the clock. Even yeah. if you lose the point, the major stays up there. So the Spartans absolutely, oh, the last players, is. they just want to cross it up and try to suck as much of that time off the clock as possible here. I think there's only one player left, Matt, actually. Uh, back Dorito bunker on the Dorito side. So Hemp Hill into the 50-yard line for Tennessee, able to get that cross-field kill. And this should be able to tie things up. They want to. They need to hurry up, though. They want to preserve as much of that major penalty on the Spartans as they possibly can. They need to sprint that in there. Now he's going to sprint it in. And looks like Tennessee conceding. No, I'm sorry. Uh, Spartans conceding that point. That's going to give the point 
to Tennessee. Two to two is the score. Two minutes why and 11 seconds to go. Why would you concede I, that point? I don't you know. Have, you have a penalty. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine, Catfish. I mean, yes, you should not do that. Yeah. You, you're, you want as much of that time. And, you know, it's not exactly like they were sprinting the flag in either. Yeah. So they're kind of giving them a couple extra seconds off of that. We're, we're watching the replay as, you know, Tennessee kept trying it, finally able to make that snake off the break. It definitely paid dividends for them. Um, but most importantly, and there's Carlin for Michigan State. He gets taken out, and you can see that major penalty was called. And that was the big reason why Tennessee lost that. So tie ball game right now. Stick with us. We'll be right back. back let's check up with Lauren looks like she's down in the pits with Tennessee uh, I am actually uh, in the pits here but I was gonna tell you that that major penalty uh, that Michigan State Spartans got was for one of the players got hit in the goggles and kept playing on um, because they didn't win that point he will be starting with a minute 16 left in the box back to you minute 16 is a lot of time well wow, lots of time looks like we got Tennessee players running out to get to their, their station here got under five seconds so if you're Tennessee, Spartan's going to be down a body. If you can get a kill, make it a five on three. Oh, yeah. You want to be careful, but if you can finish this point out and force the Spartans to start down, uh, I mean, that would be best case scenario for them. We'll see if that's going to work out. No, it actually goes the opposite direction as Michigan State is able to shoot a Tennessee body off the break, and now it's four on four. Looks like uh, we got a, oh, man. Yep, a Michigan player coming up. It's Tennessee making that push. Oh, man. Ramsey is Ramsey's. just rumbling down the snake side of the field, and Michigan State begging for a penalty on that nope. Ramsey move. Didn't get it. Now Harlan just arguing right now with the rest, wanting a call. Unfortunately, didn't get it. Looks like Tennessee needs to start pushing, making that move. Well, Tennessee, they still have a body advantage right now yeah. off of that move down here on the snake side. And the referee is in there checking out one of the guns. And that's going to oh. be a major, looks like a gun penalty on Cook. So oh. the star for Tennessee, Cook, Andrew Cook, looks like he's going to get a major gun penalty. Not sure if that was for shooting hot or had a little bit of a bouncy trigger. Not really sure. But he's walking off. And that blows Tennessee's chance to try to put another point on the board here before we get to this halftime. That's also going to force them to play the next minute and 44 seconds down a body. Spartans, is they're about to get their body out of the penalty box yeah. with just under a minute to go. There it is. That was an unfortunate turn of events there for Tennessee getting that, what was that, gun shooting hot maybe? Well, I saw the ref go in and kind of looked like he was playing with Cook's gun. Maybe we could get a replay on that. Here we go. So there's Andrew Cook. The ref gets in there. And the, yeah, sure. do you see him chronoing? I yeah, just he's see, chronoing. Yeah, he's chronoing yeah, him. And then he pulls that red flag out. So major penalty assessed on Cook. You can see frustrated <laughs> Andrew Cook turns around, goes up to the ref to kind of clarify exactly what that was for. Regardless, minute and 33 seconds, that will carry on to the second half. It's going to stay up there until that time expires. So it looks like, yeah, let's, let's check in with Lauren. Maybe she has a little bit more info on that penalty there, Catfish. Hey, guys, it actually looks like Cook is going to be suspended. He was shooting a 12-3, so he won't be playing the rest of the match. Back to you. Too many balls per second, Cook. That is unfortunate. Wow. Wow, that's a big hit for them, too, because yeah. Cook was doing a lot of work for them. So that's an a, a unfortunate turn of events for Tennessee fans out there as Andrew Cook will be suspended for the remainder of this match. And since this game is so close, that's they, really going to yeah. hurt them. They, yeah, they need, they need him. Let's get another look at this. So... You see there is Andrew Cook at the stand-up temple behind the snake. The ref probably, you know, it, when you, and everyone out there that's, that, that's listening to this that plays the game, you know when you hear a gun that's yeah. shooting too fast, you're like, wait a second, that gun's shooting <laughs> a little bit too fast. Wait a minute. So he went in there, checked it out, and assessed the penalty. But, again, big blow 
as Andrew Cook is one of the top players on that team and was playing really solid here in this game. So they're gonna have to play this whole, the rest of the 46 seconds in this first half and the whole second half is, you oh, know, he's, he's been uh, suspended from this game. Who's that, not gonna make it? Well, it's Andrew Cook going to the box. Yeah, why, why does he have well, to go to the box? Normally, when you get suspended, you go to paintball jail, yeah. which means they make you come and sit at the underneath, underneath the score tent. Yeah. Oh man, like we got Ramsey's coming in in the snake for Tennessee. Hey, they're trying to make it happen here. They're trying to score a quick point. Here before time expires, just 26 seconds to go. Yeah, look for Carlin to get that shot. Oh, Carlin eliminating player on the Dorito side for uh, Michigan here. Carlin making a move up to the Snake 50. Rap proceeds to wrap and trying to shoot this guy. Well, one body's yep. definitely coming off. There's two bodies coming off on the D side right now for Tennessee, but there's just not enough time left. Carlin just will make work. an attempt for it as he comes all the way around, cuts to that D side where the body's dropped off, and then uh, does a somersault. Did he lose his goggles? No, no. goggles stay on, but yeah, we'll hey, a somersault. We'll valent, valent effort yeah. from Carlin. Uh, he might have hurt himself. Oh. Well, Carlin's one of Michigan's better players, so uh, that would be a bad turn of events for them if they lost him. He definitely was, I mean, he gave it 100%. I think he did, it looked like he tripped and fell. I don't know why he did that that roll, that somersault into a roll. It looks sweet though. Yeah, maybe we have that as a replay here. <laughs> so here's Carlin, comes from the snake side at the 50, grabs the flag. At this time, we're, time's about to expire right now. I'm going. And then he kind of, yeah, just gets a little <laughs> hitch in his step and then <laughs> instead of diving, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, looks like the Russian judge only gives him a 6-7. Yeah. A Russian judge. <laughs> the truck gives him a 7 8. Is that what you say, guys? Yeah. Oh, the truck's so kind. 7.8. It's a pretty high score on that one, guys. I don't know. I didn't like his form. So, hey, we will be heading here into the second half of this matchup Michigan State University Spartans taking on the uh, University Tennessee Volunteers. But before we head into a short break, we're going to check in again with Lauren. Hey, guys, I'm here with Ryan Carlin. Ryan, you were pushing down that field as the clock was ticking down. What happened? Why did you have that? It, it looked pretty cool, but why did it you roll? It cool, but it didn't get the job done. Uh, I got up to the uh, 50 snake, saw that uh, eight seconds on the clock. I knew I had to sprint as fast as I could. Fortunately, I couldn't go on the inside of the W. There's too many lanes on me, so I tried to wrap around. Just too slow, apparently. All right, well, this is the closest match of the day so far, so stay tuned for the second half. <laughs> Ben Baum? Hey guys, you're doing a great job. No one tells you enough, I just want to let you know. We, we appreciate what you do. I know for sure we need new balls. Yeah, 
About to start the second half here. Tennessee Volunteers taking on Michigan State Spartans. Let's check in again with Lauren. Michigan State is getting a lucky break. It has been decided Andrew Cook will not be suspended. The refs originally thought that his 12-3 shooting was a suspension. At NXL, it would have been. But here at NCPA, there's some leniency. So he will not be suspended. Well, that is a good break because Andrew Cook, definitely a standout player for them. And yeah. this is a close game. Catfish, we asked for one and we got one. Yeah, Three I, to I two like here this. heading into the second half. These teams are, you know, both evenly matched here. It looks like we have a Tennessee player coming off the uh, Dorito side of the field. Well, they're about to get Cook back here in 10 yeah. seconds. We'll look for Ramsey's to make a move, try to get out of there. Looks like uh, we got a Spartan player in the snake one. And here comes Cook. Oh, Cook just wheeling and dealing on that side. Looks like we got Spartans at the wall and at the Snake 50. <clears throat> Looks like Ramsey's trying to wrap. Oh, and shoots the Snake or the the wall out. Yeah, that was a huge kill. Yeah, that was and a good kill by Ramsey. Yeah, that, that, that Ramsey really stepping up here for Tennessee as they do get Cook out of the box, and he's gonna. It looks like Ramsey's gonna get chronoed as well, and he's good to go. Richard at the 50 yard line right now for. Michigan State, this is a good position. It's able to put some pressure across field in that back bunker on the Toledo side of the field. Is Cook over there, yeah. really just focusing on what's in front of him. Needs to get a shot on Richard though, and keep Richard honest. But look, look, look for Ramsey to probably come out wide and try to get Richard here. Is this Spartan only one left? Well, Two see. on one, I think. I yeah, think, I don't see any behind him. I don't see why the coaches, him. well, does, He's clean. Tennessee not have a coach? Oh, he. Oh. So, poor Richard over here. You know, he got bounced. Yeah. He asked for a check and then literally gets shot on his next engagement. And that should do it here. There is, well, there is one player left alive. So oh. he was on that D side of the field. We couldn't see him from our position, but now he's past the 50 yard line. He was able to get a shot on Cook. So it's a one on one situation right now, it looks like. Ramsey right. for Tennessee. Luckily for Ramsey, he does have his coach right by him over here. He can help him, help joystick him. Actually, Ramsey does not have a coach. It doesn't look like Tennessee has a sideline coach. No, he's Matt. talking from right down here. No, I believe that's that a Spartan a, coach. Oh, he's trying to counter coach yeah. him right now. I don't think, I don't, yeah, well, Tennessee does well, he's not right have by, a coach. He, yeah, but he's right by his pits. Yeah. So, but I mean, you can't talk from the pits. Can, you used to be able to. Uh, you used to. I don't think you can now. Because yeah, well, you're supposed to have a coach. This is a, I just noticed that. They need to put a player out there. Well, Ramsey right now in a situation where he can tie this game up. There, Ramsey on your screen for Tennessee. Volunteers have an opportunity to tie this game up, but it is up to Ramsey to try to win this one-on-one -on -one gunfight, or will it be the Spartans? You can see the Spartans now, their player, all the way into the white Doritos on Tennessee's side of the field. Ramsey needs to back up, up that a little bit. When you're in a one-on-one -on -one situation, you want to play the bunker, don't let the bunker play you. I and mean, you're only looking at one guy. So the way to do that is you, know, you want to back up off that spot a little bit, which is allows you to freely go back and forth, left hand and right hand a little bit easier. You're not really worried about getting so close to that. Right. 
Oh, Michigan coach yelling at his pit, saying not to say anything. A lot of time uh, being taken off here in this one-on-one -on -one fight. It's a close match, too. Yeah, it's a close game. It's, this is a close point. Luckily for Tennessee, though, because this point ran long, they were able to get Cook out, even though Cook lost his gunfight against the player over there on that D side for the Spartans. Long one-on-one -on -one here. Ramsey hasn't gone anywhere. He stayed in that no. same spot. The only movement has been from the Spartans. And it looks like he's out of paint as well. So no pods on Ramsey's back. He has yeah. only the paint that's in his loader. And you, you can't pick up paint, can you? Mm, What's the ruling on that? Well, you can't pick up paint in Europe. You can pick up paint in the NXL. I'm going to go with I think you can pick up paint here okay. unless they changed it. Wasn't really ever a fan of that rule uh, in Europe where you can't <laughs> pick up paintballs. Their logic being that you might pick up a rock, but I mean, come on. Yeah. At that point, you probably shouldn't be playing paintball. <laughs> Good point. So, oh, and, there and then goes Ramsey the is going to take off, and he's going to grab that flag. Oh, he, he misses it. the flag, though. Oh, wow. But he's still alive, so now he has to come back and reposition Dude, here. that would have been a point. And then now he's going to come up, and it oh, looks like he smokes him down. Nice job nice by Ramsey. Job, Ramsey's. So wow. Ramsey runs to get the flag, tries to grab it, misses it, forced to stop. And unfortunately, it was Shao for uh, Michigan State over there on that D side of the field. So Shao kind of dropped the ball. He let he kind of went to sleep a little bit on Ramsey. Ramsey takes off at the right time, but misses the flag. But then he was forced <laughs> to stop, and he comes up. Shao still thinks that Ramsey's downfield yeah. and basically walks right into his gun at that center 50. Still, that was a tough play for Ramsey. Uh, I like what he did out there, Good and we got ourselves play. a tie game right yeah. now with a little under five minutes to go. That was a good all-around play there. I'm going to go out on a limb and say Ramsey's probably not going to play the next point. Why not? Because he's exhausted. <laughs> I mean, maybe. I mean, he... No, he's dying right now. I wish we could get a camera in there. Oh, oh yeah, gonna, Ramsey is him. hurting right now. <laughs> so look at this replay here. And he runs through, switches hands, tries oh, to grab the flag with his right hand. Under? What do you think he's thinking right now? Oh, uh, well, I he guess was I thinking, just go I one cannot one. believe... Oh. I didn't grab that flag. And then he's thinking, oh, thank God this guy just walked right into my gun. So just got confirmation, Catfish, you are allowed to pick up paintballs, which is what I was pretty sure was the case. But what if you pick up a rock? <laughs> I I'm, mean, I'm worried for the players. I'm going to go with you and say you probably shouldn't be playing paintball <laughs> if that's the case. <laughs> so let's check in with Lauren. She is down with Ramsey in the pits for Tennessee. Hey guys, yeah, I am here with Ramsey, sitting down, drinking some water. That was a big point for you guys, and your team needed it. Tell me how you're feeling right now, and what was running through your mind those last few seconds? Uh, I'm exhausted, to be honest with you. <laughs> but I was just like, they're yelling, just run for the flag. And I was like, well, maybe I'm fast enough, so I ran for it, missed the flag, but I was like, might as well go get him. Trade out at least, but then I got him, and won that point. Well, good job, your team needed it. Back to you guys. Hey. Again, hats off to Ramsey, man. He's definitely not slow, that's for sure. What happened? It looks like we... So the Spartans were out, and there's no one on the opposite side of the field. So Tennessee yeah. did not field five players. They said that they thought that they called a timeout, but that is not the case, and we can see them a little frustrated wow. with the situation as they're in the pits. Well, I mean, you know, you, you got to feel you either need to call a timeout or you need to put players out there to play, play the point. Yeah. So you can see Tennessee in the pits right now, a little frustrated with how this was kind shaking down. Kind of dumbfounded of what's going on. Well, maybe they thought they called a timeout and they didn't get it. Uh -huh. But they're not arguing. So you can almost always tell when a team feels they're getting a bad shake or something broke or yeah. you know, some sort of issue. So let's check in again with Lauren. Maybe she has an answer for us. Hey, guys. Yeah, that was unlucky for them, but they cannot call a timeout with less than 10 seconds on the clock. There was only three seconds when they hit the timeout buzzer, so they weren't able to get a timeout for that one. Uh. Got to maintain your focus. I understand they just had a really big point win there, but then they threw one back, so the Spartans get a free point as no one from Tennessee took the field to play that one, thought they had a timeout, but... Like Lauren just broke down, under 10 seconds, can't call a timeout. Four minutes and 23 seconds to go. So the good news for Tennessee is they do have enough time left on this clock to tie this one up again. But 
you know, it's going to be tough. I mean, this is a close match. These two teams pretty evenly matched here, Catfish. Yeah, definitely. I'm still kind of dumbfounded myself why Tennessee has chosen to not go with a coach on the sideline. I mean, one of the players can is allowed to go out there and coach, correct? I think so. Are they just that confident, or? Mm, well, it, I mean, it's you don't. Again, this this style of, of paintball is a holdover um, from the original NXL, uh, which started back in 2003. So initially, we had these really long halves, and over time, that time got pared down. Obviously, the NXL and Top Pro Paintball went away from the two-half format, first into a race two, now just time with the mercy rule. But here, you're playing that, the, you know, you're playing two 10-minute halves. Yeah. So maybe they're just used to not playing with a coach. I'm just, yeah. I'm trying to think, why would you not have a coach out there? It's true. But that's like having an extra life. You know what I mean? Well, it's like having a sixth guy. Yeah, exactly. Especially in this format. I mean, the coach is out there on the sidelines. All right, maybe Lauren's got it for us. Lauren. Hey, yeah, so Tennessee was telling me that they've actually never brought a coach to a tournament and no one was available. They asked all of their alumni and no one was able to come out. So they're just focusing on doing it live on the field. Back to you. There you go. There you go. Well, again, they got a chance still as they shoot a body here on the snake side. Oh, but they lose their body up the center. So this is, yeah. it's now four on four and the Spartans got that three points. So they are definitely in the driver's seat right now, under four minutes to go. There's the battle developing here on the snake side. No one in the snake for either team. It looks like White, by his body movement, looks like he's getting ready to make a move to yeah, the snake. He wants to go. He's yeah, second guessing right himself there. right now. There is the dive, he's and he's in. Move. And then White's going to wrap around here and oh. crawl into snake two. He's going to go right to the 50 yard line. Michigan State also making a move. White up to the 50. He's in a good position. He's See if he can do something with it. He's got to be careful. And here he might as well. Look, you have a little bit of time. He probably should just chill out, let oh. his team protect him. Begging oh. Michigan, is that going to be a penalty on oh, White? White. Hmm, oh, interesting. Wow. So that is interesting. White gets a penalty that pulls out Cook. Carlin is still alive, and he's uh, going to dice up the back center player and then get a, should be able to get a shot on the back corner as well, who is not. Hey, man, you have to keep your wits about you. When chaos starts to break down, get yeah. your head on a swivel. Start head checking on the other side of the field to see what's happening over there. So Carlin pumped up, and now a two-point lead here for the Spartans. That's a little twist there. <laughs> yeah, you can say that again. Yeah. Lauren, what do you got for us? Hey, guys, refs are telling me that White spun on Carlin, which is why he got that major penalty. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't see the front of Carlin, so, you know, obviously that's why we have referees down there. Um, but, yeah, it's just uh, Tennessee getting a couple bad shakes here and now going to have to try to come back and score two points to tie it up. Unfortunately, they're going to have a minute and 48 seconds left, which is the bulk of the remaining time. So you see the replay. So there's Carlin. So I think Carlin was begging for that penalty yeah, before he, he even got there. He yeah. had to engage that second time. So see Carlin come out. Yeah, he uh, gets his shot on him and calls the shot. And then he's going to turn around and beg for the penalty, gets it. So it's just a you know good good move for Carlin. Really, I like how Carlin's playing out there, and he's definitely playing a little hyped up too. So he was pretty happy at the end of that point. He should be two point lead right now for the Spartans, and it's you know, it's going to be tough for Tennessee with that major penalty. Yeah, that's. I mean, two points down. I mean, it's it's doable. You know, get one or two kills off a break. You know, equalize it. Go heads up. Well, anytime you're down a body the first thing on your agenda, even up that body yeah. count. Try to spin those guns around, hopefully get a kill, make it four on four, and play from there. Um, normally you would want to burn as much of the clock off as you can, but in this situation, down by two with less than three minutes to play, 2.57 on that clock, you really can't, you don't have that luxury. So what Tennessee's going to have to do is go with step one, even up the body count, but they're still going to have to play aggressive and take ground, which that really hasn't been a problem for Tennessee. Tennessee has been playing aggressive. They have been able to get into spots. It's what they're doing from those spots that's, yeah. that's pretty much, that's the bigger issue for them. Looks like we have White coming out there. Oh, not gonna make it. So, Tennessee kind of falling apart here yeah. as they weren't able to get that fourth body out. So they had to start with three. Doing so good too, doing so good and just coming apart the seams. I think we have Carlin just making his way methodically up the snake here. Oh, man. Carlin asking for a hold here. Well, 
Carlin trying to finish this one out here from the snake and it was another pretty easy point for the Spartans. They were only playing against three guys. Yeah. Wild is gonna go in and hang that flag up here, which will give us around 210 left, 209. And now a three point spread. Getting deeper and deeper, that water's starting to get deep. Yeah, kinda, this volunteer's been digging themselves a hole ever since that one on one. Yeah. So, so be, even though they don't have a coach, a leader needs to emerge though. Yeah, So, okay, you don't have a coach, you're Tennessee. Whoever the veteran <laughs> guy is on that squad, whoever the, the the elder statesman needs to be the guy helping his guy help. You, you have to just step in and then kind of take over, be a player coach, because you won't have, be making these mistakes like they're making. So regardless, Tennessee digging themselves a hole right now. Six to three is your score, and we'll be right back. The DiGF Boomstick is the next evolution of the legendary die barrel line. Our glass fiber barrels are constructed using the same custom assembly process as our trusted carbon fiber barrels. At the heart of the GF Boomstick is a gun drilled 303 surgical steel insert, which has an extremely low coefficient of friction, provides the ultimate in durability, and gives you the smoothest surface finish. Two piece alignment is a critical factor in a barrel's true accuracy. The GF's self centering angled surfaces ensure proper back to tip mating, eliminating tolerance variations in thread wear. Dye's trademark muzzle port design gives the GF unparalleled accuracy and a low sound signature. The GF Boomstick is the most accurate, quiet, and stylish barrel available. With so much performance and versatility engineered into the Dye GF Boomstick, there's no question why it has been the choice of champions around the world for well over a decade. Not a lot of time left, 209 in regulation. Before we get into the action, let's check in again with Lauren. Hey guys, during that last point, Andrew Cook was on the sideline uh, asking Michigan State to run the clock out from the sidelines. He was yelling to number 14 who hung the flag to let the time uh, tick down a little bit more because they want to keep the point spread uh, smaller. They don't want to keep playing and losing points. It was a strategic throw of the game. Well, if I'm Michigan, I'm going to go with no, yeah. and I'm going to try to run the score up on you because that's what they're trying to do out here. Yeah. Point spread's important. So right now... Oh, Carlin just dicing people up right now. Uh, dice, he's having a game right now. Yeah, Carlin's definitely having a game here for Michigan State. The Spartans trying to put their seventh point on the board. Tennessee about 23 seconds away from getting their fifth body back, though. Yeah. And so now maybe Andrew Cook's going to ask this, ask the same here, see if they can run it out. But Lynch not having any of that. He's mm -hmm. going to run that flag in and put the seven point on the board. Minute and 16 seconds left to go. That's kind of an odd thing to yeah. ask your opponents. Yeah. Hey, can you take it easy on us? <laughs> Don't make it look so bad. Well, I mean. I mean, I get it. Yeah. But. Yeah. Yeah, ever since that one-on-one, -on -one, Matt, it's just been rough, rough storms for these guys over here. Yeah, and it, you know, normally when you have like something like that happen, that's when you get the momentum boost. Yeah, exactly. And instead, as soon as they didn't put those five bodies out, it's just they completely fell apart mentally. Yeah. And but again, that's I think that that's one of the interesting things about this game. That's part of the test. It's not just okay, how great your snapshot, how fast can you run and shoot, did you walk the field. Yeah, that's 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 all great stuff. You need all that. That's important. But that's paintball one on one. Yeah. The mental aspect of it, staying focused when things aren't going your way, that's the true test of this game. So, you know, the volunteers really need to get a little bit more mentally tough out here. Um, because I you know, again, I like the game plans. They were playing aggressive. Need to work on their uh, on their, their composure in the bunkers and then obviously need to have a leader emerge off the field yeah. try to get a little bit more organization there because again it, other than the miss or if it wasn't for the missteps off the field I mean this would be a totally different ball game right now but unfortunately we're sitting here with a four point spread and it's not looking good right now yeah, for, uh, for Tennessee Volunteers yeah. still but uh, you know thank you guys so much for joining us um, here on this webcast uh, if you feel like donating, help us out here. Go to ncpapaintball.com. There's a donation page set up. And, uh, you know, we got two more awesome days of paintball and a whole afternoon coming at you here. Uh, the next game is going to be Ohio Bobcats taking on Wisconsin Platteville Pioneers 
after the conclusion of this match. Still a little bit over a minute left to go. See if Tennessee can go out and win one for Pride right now. Timeout. Someone's I don't trying to get think a timeout. They have five bodies. There they go. Uh, now they, Tennessee is just. Tennessee's falling apart right yeah, now. Yeah, they're at the seams right now. Barely Two got. Two at the wall. Oh. And one just gets murdered. <clears throat> Looks like a, oh, wow. And a major for Tennessee. They are falling apart at the seams right now. The desperation penalty. And yeah. I mean, they, they, they didn't even get their, they barely got four guys out. <laughs> just, um, you know, oh. if I was their coach right now, I would be yelling at those guys, hey, look, I know we got a couple bad breaks, but I need you to maintain your composure. Well, thank God they don't have a coach, Matt, <laughs> because or else he'd be saying that to them. Maybe that's why they didn't bring a coach. You know what? You keep yelling at us. I don't think we need a coach. <laughs> I don't want to get yelled at. So we're going to get another point here, but right now, not really going to matter other than to you know potentially maybe keep the point spread a little closer if Tennessee can actually get their bodies out. The problem is they just got their fifth body back, and then they throw it away with the desperation major. Yeah. 48 seconds on the clock left. Um, maybe we'll see the, the quad wall. Quad wall? Well, they can't do the five wall because they ruined that chance. I don't know. These, again, they look mentally defeated right now. Um, so I'm going to go with probably back bunkers, maybe one guy to the wall. All grays? I don't think they have it in them to run them all to the wall right now. So let's check out a replay here. Again, just Tennessee faulting and falling down mentally here because this was a close game. If you're just tuning in, it was 3-3. And you can see here the replay. I mean, it's pretty much the Spartans aren't fighting a strong opponent right now. I mean, Tennessee's just kind of rolling over and showing them their belly and put us out of our misery. Mm -hmm. So and then you saw the end of that point. And before we get to what potentially will be the last point, let's check in with Lauren. Hey guys, that Tennessee penalty was for playing on. He was shot in the hand and just kept shooting. And like you've said, it just seems like they're done with this match. They're in the pits. They're not really communicating. They're not talking. It doesn't seem like they're going to go out here and try to get some points so it's not such a big point spread. It's just so frustrating to watch, though, because yeah. when, when they, you came off that that one on one and everyone should have been feeling pretty good and then they don't put five guys out, it's still a one point game. Yeah and a lot of time left on the clock. But since that moment, it's just been, you know, missed up after miscue. And so it looks like Tennessee's going to call a timeout, you know, need to get it up regardless. I mean, they're looking at a huge point spread. So we're going to take a quick break. Stick with us. You know what makes paintball so amazing? The precedence is the top players will always dominate. And maybe that's true, just maybe. But the very concept of competition is that just because you're strong doesn't mean you can't be overcome. Every long shot or every underdog will tell you the same thing. The odds will be against you. The route to victory is a dark and windy road. But this test? This test has no answer. This test is not science. It's not a textbook reference. This is a completely different universe. One where hard work and passion will always trump logic. The ticker has begun. In five seconds, that buzzer will go off. And before you make your first step, just remember, the past will not always add up to your future. No stat nor lineup makes the difference of who wins and loses until your moment arrives. And that is what makes paintball amazing. The new season has begun and a whole new level of support is here. Take your team to the highest level of competition with industry leading support and the best equipment paintball has to offer. And that's not all. We love winning just as much as you. And when your team wins, we all win. Join the sponsorship program and earn tons of free paint this year. Hear more at paintballsponsorship.com. Yeah, we're back 48 seconds to go here in this match. And it's been really disappointing, to be honest, to watch this second half and see Tennessee fall apart. They had kept it really close. And it's been all Spartans since then, and not just on the field. You know, Tennessee broke mentally here when they couldn't get five bodies out and a missed timeout. But that, in that moment, it was still a one-point game. So they really need to toughen up a little bit here heading on in the tournament. Uh, as, again, don't hate their game plans. They need to tighten up a little bit in the bunker uh, as far as survivability is concerned. But, you know, just a little bit more focus is what we need out of Tennessee. Yeah. Looks like Spartans saying no one up to the wall. Not going, uh, oh, and a Tennessee player coming off the uh, snake side. Looks like we have Carlin going straight <laughs> into Car the yeah. 50 snake. Carlin is definitely trying to run the score up right yeah, now. Yeah, he is. So 
Oh, but Carlin catches one. Oh. A little too greedy on that gunfight for Carlin. He shakes it off, no big deal. They're gonna get a, a pretty big win here. 19 seconds to go. Looks like we got another Tennessee player, two Tennessee players coming out. I think we got White by himself. Eliminating one of the Spartan players coming. Oh, they're saying flag. Oh, uh, watch White dice these two got clowns up. Oh, yep. there's one. One oh, of them got the smoked, other. and it looks like he might have got the other one too. So a couple free kills for White to end it. And Tennessee finishing still had a body in yeah. that box with that major. <laughs> So lots of work that Tennessee needs to do. Um, and it's kind of tough, to be honest, Kath, is to even know how well the Spartans are playing right now. Yeah. Uh, it was just a close game in the beginning. And then once Tennessee kind of rolled over, um, that's not good That's not good for this. It's good in the sense the Spartans are going to get a big win. Yeah. But we don't really even know how well ten or, uh, the Spartans are playing right now. This is true. So that's still, we'll have to see how things play out. I mean, I guess to them, the Spartans, they played great, but they don't even really know how well they did because, like you said, you know, after that one-on-one, -on -one, it's just it was just a whole different team out there. Absolutely. So before we sign off and take a short break before we head into our next match between the Ohio Bobcats and the wisconsin Platteville Pioneers, let's check in with Lauren down in the pit. Hey guys, I'm here with Ryan White. Congratulations on that thank win. You, Coming into this match, uh, I was talking to you guys. You did lose to Central Florida, I yep. think, three to eight. Yep. But you guys were happy with your performance, just getting those points because you are an underdog coming into this. You just won this match. Did you come into this match really thinking that you guys were going to take the win? Yeah, we uh, we played Tennessee before, so we know they're right on our level. They've got great skill. They got great players. But we knew we had a shot to beat them. Uh, we actually, in one of our regional matches, had a really close semifinal match where they got the best of us. So we came out here with some fire, and we wanted revenge on them. Well, they seem to really lose momentum at the end when they got a three-point spread, and they seem to be throwing points away. But you guys are constantly passionate, no matter if it's the first point or you have a four-point spread ahead. Um, do you feel like that morale in the pits helps you guys to come out and have that aggressive play? Absolutely. Morale is everything. If the guys are upbeat and ready to go, we're going to go in with a positive mindset, and we're going to do our job and win. All right, guys. Stay tuned for another match after this. <laughs> 